are known to you. And from you, no secrets are hidden. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts so we may perfectly love you and glorify your holy name. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as God's dearly beloved children, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Time to mourn and a time to dance. The time 
to throw away stones and time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their joy. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. 
Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. A reading from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep in his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you not, or welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those with his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Maybe you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also answered, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then you will answer them, Truly I will tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So we find ourselves on New Year's Eve, the last day of 2020. Extends past human measurement 
out of time. And yet, in human time, we have so many opportunities to live and celebrate God's graciousness and the work to which God has called us with a spirit of hope and joy, acknowledging the many seasons that we encounter over the course of our life, over the course of a year, over the course of a day. This is a special year, and I'll admit there have been years I have read the covenant service language and thought, well, isn't that nice that that still stands the test of time fairly well? This year, it seems the words are important to us that this is the end of the human year that is not marked with, um, shall we say, mad cap glee, but we really mark what we have accomplished together in this year. We have grieved together. We have been angry together. We've been confused together. And yet we rejoiced together. Do you remember in March the first people who celebrated birthdays in COVID? And we thought, oh, oh dear, this is so horrible that these few people will be celebrating a birthday uh, under quarantine. And, and now tomorrow is January and it's more rare to have not celebrated a birthday during COVID than to have done so. We've done all that. And I think it's important to recall the good work we've done together to stay connected to our neighbors, friends and family, our congregation, and to build connections no matter how tenuous with the people we do not know who have extended grace to us and in whom we have extended grace. This includes the people who are preoccupied and don't notice before we stop, but we notice before we stop and that they missed it. It's those small things that become large when we remember the time that we are in, when God's time intersects with the artifact of human time. And so because of the importance or significance of this year, I took the time to learn a little bit more about John Wesley's covenant service. I assumed that they would have always been on New Year's Eve, and most of them were, but the first one was in May in 1755. And Wesley said this of the service. It's another means of increasing serious religion practiced by our forefathers and attended with eminent blessing, namely the joining in a covenant to serve God with all our heart and all our soul. He wrote in his journal that about 1,800 people attended. Now, Wesley wrote many things in his journal, which is why I'm glad someone else found these snippets for me. And I will note that every year, he wrote something like this. Our service is nearly double in size. There were 1,800 people there. So I'll say to you, counts like a preacher. Um, the next year that service moved to New Year's Day, at what became the customary time of 4 a.m. In January of 1783, on the 1st, following that service, he wrote, May I begin to live today. That would be almost 30 years after first of these covenant services. Wesley being rejuvenated by the reminder of that covenant that we made with God that we will remember that we belong to God and that God is first. God's time is first as we begin the 
start of a new human year. This year, I think Wesley's covenant service is especially relevant to us as we remember in the midst of all of the emotions, all of the effort of 2020, that God goes with us every day. And every day we are called to remember that God is first in our lives. As a baptized people who have accepted that name and claim, we are called to remember God's promises to us and our promises to God. As we begin the new year, 2021, we do have hopes that it might be easier or better. But in the midst of that, we know that God will continue to be faithful to us. And God's call on our lives remains as true as ever, that we are to be the people who remember that we are those children of God, named, claimed, called to share the good news, called to remember that we live in God's time, even as we interact in the midst of human time. This is what John Wesley said on January 1st, 1785. Whether this be the last or no, may it be the best year of my life. May this be the best year of our life. Together, as we go forward in faith with God. So now, we begin the covenant service. I found myself explaining to a Lutheran friend who is unfamiliar with this service that it makes a lot of sense, especially if you remember having read anything by Dickens. Because the words have come to us over hundreds of years and carry great truth in them. So Marta and I will lead this, and the choir will respond, and we will go forward in faith through this covenant service. Dearly loved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is a life found in Christ, redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those who have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is the mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood so it would last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God, who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves his goodness and grace to us, showing us that his promise stands firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live life for ourselves, but instead to only live for Jesus Christ because he has loved us and given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it is important for us to remember and be affirm our promises and vows. In this same way, we come today to renew our covenant with God. Many generations have done this before us. Today, we make the covenant our own, renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. The confession. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ, but sometimes we fall short. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Here God, you have set forth the 
now confess to you our sins. Please forgive us for the poverty of our worship. For the selfishness of our prayers. For our inconsistency and unbelief. For the ways we neglect fellowship and your grace. For our hesitation to tell others about Christ. For the ways we deceive others. Christ. 
We accept the place and work that he gives us, acknowledging that he alone will be our reward. I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. Christ is Savior to those who are his true servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. To be his servant is to consent fully to his will. Christ accepts nothing less. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Now confirm this truth in Holy Covenant. Make it a reality in your life in these three ways. First, set apart time in your day, more than once, to be spent alone with the Lord. Seek to receive God's special care for you and gracious acceptance of you. Carefully think through the words of this covenant and its conditions. Examine your heart, even if you have freely given your life to Christ. Name the sins in your life. Reflect on whether you are willing to choose Christ's holy laws and strict commands. Be sure you are clear in all of these, so you do not lie to God. Second, uphold a serious spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Do not trust in your own strength and power, but rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength. In this way, he will empower you to keep your promise. Fourth, be determined to be faithful. You have given your heart and life to God. You have opened your mouth to dedicate yourself to the Lord. With God's power, never go back to your former way of living. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with God. Fall on your knees. Lift your hands. Open your heart.
Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. Jesus, I hear and now make this covenant with you, and accept whatever comes in life. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death will separate me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I hear and now willingly take on your yoke and burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I accept them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising I will strive to order my whole life around your direction. I will not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows you, even the thoughts of your heart. Oh God,
who seals the new covenant with his blood on the cross, bringing you peace. May the Holy Spirit guide your life, both now and forever. Go in peace to serve the Lord.